Okay, so when I left you lovely lot in part one, we had gone from this to this, but we still need to make it to this. So I hope you enjoy part two. We're going to jump straight back into it. This is D by the way, not jam. Enjoy guys. slacking there's still two horses that need hay so 2020 came to an end and I was really really chuffed with her Okay, so I just wanted to chime in with a bit of a voice over here because I'm seeing some really big differences from the part one video where I was doing the BE80 course and this is a few months later, it's still the same year and it almost looks to the naked eye that Jam's kind of taken a step backwards because you can see there like she's fighting a bit, we're getting in a bit deep because I'm struggling to sort of get her back for the fences but I think in reality this was more kind of a time that she suddenly got a lot of confidence in herself and she reached this point where she got really sort of keen jumping and I do get it a lot with my youngsters is you're kind of helping them along a lot at the start and then out of nowhere they get really keen and they're kind of fighting you to a fence so it does look a little bit kind of scrappy at the minute but knowing the story of Jam I can see that this is actually quite a good sign However, at the time, I was thinking, oh God, I'm having this awful problem with her. But grin and bear it, guys, oh, it gets wow. better. What a clever girl. Clever girls. Good girl. Fantastic! Okay, sorry, it's me chiming in again, but I just want to say that I think there is a big improvement between this round here, as I say that we just have an argument, and the round you've just watched, and there's only a week in between, and I remember the exact exercise I did in this week before coming out to this next competition, and it was when you have a placing pole before and after a fence, and it did really help Jam to kind of just concentrate a little bit more and figure out that there are things, you know, before and after offence that she needs to focus on rather than just pulling to the top rail. So yeah, I thought I'd just come in and tell you guys what I did in the week in between these competitions. And it's definitely made an improvement. I mean, obviously it's not perfect, but for a week's difference, I was really happy with this round. And then 2021 came about, believe it or not, guys. And of course, I got Jam back out of venting. And again, she was fantastic. Like we'd moved up to 90 at this point. We did a few 90s.
And then it came to the point where I had to do my first hundred and we chose Chumney Castle, which is a beautiful event, not too far from us. And if you've watched the vlog, you'll know that that was actually a really big success as well. She ended up placing, we were a little bit slow on the cross country, but she went double clear and I believe had a sub 30 dressage. So I figured now would be a good time to introduce this exciting part of the video. And that is all thanks to the amazing and eventful life. So you guys know I have worked for them a little bit in the past and I actually ended up winning the footage of my B80 round, Jam's first event. Um, yeah, they were there on the day and they kindly put forward the prize of winning your round. However, they were also filming at Chumley Castle, where I did my first B100 on jam. You good Ace? <laughs> He's like, give me my haylage, mum. And they very kindly have given me the footage from that day. And we are going to do a cross comparison. Sorry, Ace. <laughs> <laughs> of the two rounds. I thought it'd be really cool to see her first ever cross country round compared to her first hundred. Obviously we've gone up two levels in between the two rounds. Nine horses, Hayd. So for those of you that don't know about Uneventful Life, they basically go to events all over the UK and also Australia and they will film your entire round. They set up cameras and most of the time they catch every single fence. There will be the odd time where, you know, you've got a fence in a really bizarre place and it might be difficult to catch, but 99% you're going to see every single fence from your round. And it is incredible to watch back and learn from. You'll see when I compare these two rounds, how much you can learn from it. It's amazing. It's such a fantastic tool to learn from because it's so rare that you will actually get any footage of your entire round. And so often the fence I'll have like a problem with or I want to watch back is at the far end of the course and no one was there and I'll be trying to tell mum what happened. But without seeing it back as a rider, it's very hard to kind of process it. And you'll see when I do a voiceover of these two rounds that it's just so much easier when you see it with your own eyes and the mistakes are kind of glaringly obvious, but when you're riding around it and you have that split second to assess it just after you've ridden it before you're thinking about the next fence, it's very difficult to kind of self-improve. So it is an amazing tool for learning and you can go back and look at all of your past events. If you head over to their website, I will link it down below. You can type in your name or your horse's name and it will bring up every single event that they've managed to catch you at. Head over and have a look. It's so interesting to go back and look at your old ones. Also, it is really lovely if you've had a fantastic round to be able to buy the footage and look back on it. So it's great for that too. But a massive thank you for them very kindly gifting the round of me at Chumley and we'll now head over to the studio and we'll see how they compare. Alrighty then let's get into this so just for reference guys the first clip will always be the 81 I've also not looked over this too much so you're getting a realistic reaction so first thing to say is I'm pretty slow coming out the start box in both but she was definitely a bit wobblier in the 80. This I remember having to give such a big kick. Look how spooky she was. Bless her, she went so high. And you can see, yeah, she like she knows what's coming now. She didn't over jump that first fence. So that's good progress. Next one, still really spooky, still really over jumping. Again, in the 100, we're a lot faster. She's not wasting any time going too high, which is really good to see. She definitely knows her job a bit more. The 80, she's got back into the swing of things a little bit. 100, she looks quite keen there. Like we had a little chip in. That's really good. 
Again, this is the 100. Sorry, there was an extra fence. Oops. Okay, so first combination on the 80. Fairly, fairly straight, you know, actually. I think I added a stride there by the looks of it. Ah, and we'll see. I do the same thing here. Oops, but she kind of had a half stride. Potentially learning that I do not ride forward enough, at least for the early combinations on course. Those two fences both look fine. Okay, another combination. This is the 80 guys. I remember being so worried about this. <laughs> Look how wobbly she was. Bless her heart. This fence was massive in the 100. Had a bit of a flyer to that. And then, okay, back to the 80. That's fine. All looking good. All looking good. Another 80 combination here. Again, I mean, we're wobbly, but can you blame her? It's literally her first event. And look at that mud. Bless her heart. She's so honest. Okay, another combination with 100 here, and I think I learned, yes, finally actually pushed when I landed. Still a little bit off though. I need to kick a bit more through my combinations. I'm such a wimp. Oh, I had to replay this. Oh, look at the knees. I love her. Okay, so 100 fence again. The knees. Oh my goodness, the knees have not changed. Here is another 100 combination. You kind of went down this little dip and then pop. Back on another one. She was so honest through that. I'm really pleased with how she did that combination. Again, 100 fence. We've got a few more extra fences in the 100. Back to the 80. Her first ever competitive water. I mean, what a sweetheart. Literally. <laughs> a little bit of trot. And, yep, yeah, we've kept that going into the 100. Still love to trot through water. Potentially wasting some time there, Meg. There again. That was fine. That was quite nice. That was for the 100. Another combination here for the 80. And that... Yeah, I mean, that was lovely. Like, actually rode for my stride there and didn't hesitate on landing. That fence was all right. That was in the 100. Another 80 fence. Again, like, she looks good towards the end of the course. I think I relax and ride a bit more forward at the end of the courses, where at the start, I really kind of... I sort of hold myself back a bit, or hold her back, certainly, and actually put us in a bit of danger by not riding for a stride. So that's certainly something to take from this. I mean, look at that. That was a much better forward stride for the 100 there. Why don't I ride like that at the start of the courses? Again, in the 80, I finally get into a kind of gallop by the end of the course because I realise I'm I'm running down on my clock. And then you can see here, like, it's, it's a lot better. I meet it on a much nicer stride. I'm not taking away from her canter. Oh, my God, this, this made me absolutely die. Look at Han in the background of that footage. Oh, my God. Okay, last fence of the 80. Got her a little bit close, but that's fine. And we ride for the time. And last fence of the 100. Much better shot than in the 80. But again, <laughs> riding for the time. I'm probably late. There we go. How interesting was that? And also really opened my eyes to the fact that I think because I've produced jam from the start, I'm kind of holding her back a little bit now and I do need to learn to actually just ride forward a little bit. You can't have finished your hay already. That's impossible. You've just eaten all the hayage out of it, haven't you? So shortly after Chumley Castle, Jam and I went to our regional finals, which is how you actually end up qualifying for Badminton Grassroots, sponsored by the amazing Voltaire Design. And if you've watched that vlog, you'll know that the day didn't exactly go to plan. I made a major mistake with my stopwatch. Ooh. And on the day, I thought it actually was the reason that I wouldn't qualify for badminton. I think it's cost me. Um, the qualifying place, which is really sad. Because B changed how you qualify. So it used to be loads of regional finals across the country and if you placed in the top 10% at B90 or the top 20% at B100, you would then qualify for one of these regional finals. You then had to place in those percentages again at the regional final and you'd go to badminton. However, they scrapped that last year and they now have, I believe it's only four area festivals. And the idea is that they make it more of an occasion it's a bit of a bigger course to prepare you for going to badminton which does make sense but it does mean you have far fewer chances to qualify anyway they changed it round and they kept the percentages the same but on assessment they realized that not nearly enough people had qualified so they actually ended up changing the percentage of people qualify up to 20 percent at b90 and jam fell just inside the 15 percent with where she placed she was well inside the new percentage and i got that email saying 
you're going to badminton. And I cried, I cried in the bath. I'm not gonna put that footage in because it's not very flattering. Han was actually filming it, don't ask why. Disclaimer, we don't bath together. She just happened to come in. It doesn't matter. I forgot that I still had a stable to muck out because mum offered a bacon roll this morning and yeah, I was sure as hell gonna go inside and claim that prize. So I do still have Dee Dee's stable to muck out, no joy. So it's actually around now that this little story starts to go a little bit pear-shaped because again, if you're watching the eventing vlogs last year, you'll know that Jam kind of had a bit of a wobble at the end of the season. So I did another 100 with her and she went so green on me in the show jumping that I ended up withdrawing her before the cross country because I just didn't feel like it was a good idea to go around what was a really big track when she was feeling a little bit green. So after that, I went to another B90, shock horror, I messed my stopwatch up. Literally no surprise. And she would have won that day. She did so well, she did a double clear and the best dressage in the section. Um, but we still end up placing quite highly, even with my mishap. So I was like, hooray, we're saved. Like confidence restored, back up to 100 for the final event of the season. Lo and behold, confidence was not restored and I got eliminated. And that's kind of where I'm starting my season this year. And I'm not gonna lie, I've not had the best winter because I've been playing that event over and over in my head and I know why it went wrong. Like, it's not, it's not that we can't do it. It was just, it was a really bad combination on the day of, you know, having her and Dee at the event so she was really distracted and having moved back up to 100 and knowing that I was a bit nervous and apprehensive about it. So it has been playing on my mind a lot this winter and for that reason I thought it'd be quite interesting just to go over my pre-badminton event schedule with you guys so you can see how I'm gonna get her to badminton this year in terms of events based on how it kind of ended last year with it not being that great. <laughs> Okay, Dee Dee's stable marked out. Yorkshire pudding batter made using Mary Berry recipe. All right, that's a top tip, guys. Anyway, now I'm ready to tell you about Jam's event plan in the lead up to badminton. So as I said, our confidence was trashed <laughs> at the end of last season. So I've put a lot of thought into what event I do and at which height. As I mentioned in one of my previous videos, badminton, although I've qualified at 90, it will be huge. They're allowed to make it a lot bigger than that because it's a championship course. It's also a lot longer, it's a lot more technical. Go and watch the Bear Badminton vlog and you'll see what I mean. The fences are huge. They are big questions like in terms of technicality. So to be going at 90, we really do need to be confident at 100. So the first event of the season, I'm aiming to go to Astony Walls on the 3rd of March. This is super early. I've got to hope and pray that it won't get rained off. But Aston does have show jumping and dressage on a surface and they also have really good access to the cross country course for vehicles because that's one of the things. They have to be able to access every fence with an ambulance. And if they can't do that, the event can't run. But Aston has tracks around their course, like road tracks. So there's really good access to the fences. So fingers crossed, that was a bit of a morbid tone, wasn't it? Fingers crossed that goes ahead and she's going to be doing it being 90 at Aston. It's renowned for being quite a nice course that it will be a really good, easy way of getting her back into eventing. It's quite flat, it's not too long, should be very confidence giving. After that, we're going to be heading to Swaycliff Park on the 19th of March. Fingers crossed, an eventful life will be there and I'll be able to analyze my round again. And she is going to be doing a 90 there again simply because it's going to be a little bit more testing than Aston. They always build a little bit bigger there and the terrain is also a little bit more testing depending on the ground situation. Sometimes they can take you all the way down some quite steep hills and then 
you guessed it guys, all the way back up. So sticking at B90 for Swaycliffe, hopefully both of those go to plan before Oxtals on the 2nd of April. This is an event I've never been to. It was previously unaffiliated and I think it's only going to be with British eventing for this year. Don't ask me why. But from what I've heard and from what research I've done, it's meant to be a really nice course. And they're meant to build it quite nicely there and be quite encouraging. I think the fences kind of progress up and you're not gonna have all of them at maximum height, which badminton's gonna be and the rest. So hopefully there I'm going to be doing my first B100 of the season. And then my very last event before we head off to Badmington is going to be at Ascot under Witchwood on the 16th of April. And again, I'm going to be doing touch wood if all goes to plan another b100 here again i know the course there jams competed very well there in the past and i know they're not going to throw in anything horrendous like it's it's a decent course but it's not a it's not a mean course and it's not like a full up one you know it's quite a good one to go for a confidence run and then two weeks later on the 3rd of may i'm going to be going to badminton and pooping in my little pants you'll notice if you look at a calendar those four events are all dated two weeks apart i find that this is the best way for Jam to kind of keep her head in the game but not overdo her. So this should also be really good for her fitness because it's gonna be so consistent. Obviously I've got backup plans, I've got other events I can go to if these events get canceled. I've also looked at all the unaffiliated calendars. I feel like I have hopefully every possibility, I should never say that with horses, covered. So there we have it, the story of how Jam got to qualifying for badminton from a little boggy baby pony to a B100 horse. <laughs> Pony to horse. She did do some growing, but she was actually a horse when she came over. She's about 15 one ish for people wondering. And then our confidence crashed, and hopefully, the confidence is now going to go whoop all the way back up with my bulletproof event plan. So, two things we've learned from this video is firstly, don't give up on your baby horses if you feel like you're making no progress. They do pull through, and I can vouch that sometimes it can take seven or eight months before you see any of your hard work pay off. Second thing we've learned is that carrots will stain. What a mind boggler. I mean, it's a very pale top. Sorry, Makara. I'm pretty sure they'll wash out, you know. Now I'm a pro, pro washer. Last thing to say is a massive thank you to An Event for Life for very kindly providing the Chumley footage. It was amazing to compare the two events, her first B80 and her first 100. Do head over to their website if you would like to look for footage. They may have captured you and you won't even know about it. The cameras are very indescript, like you don't know about them and then boom, you've just got your entire round. So I'll leave the link below, but a massive thank you to An Event for Life. Hope you've enjoyed this video, guys. You may have noticed it's been a little bit of a different style let me know down in the comments if you enjoyed it and if you did please give it a thumbs up it really does help me out make more content for you and just do my dream job help a girl out guys help me live out my dream you can hit subscribe while you're there if you don't mind all right i live laugh love you bye